Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you the quick way that I um, create bases for running animations or walking animations or jogs. So I'm going to try to show you the process as simple as possible to create not an absolutely stunning animation, but something that you can work off of to create then various different types of characters. And I sort of want to make the argument that this is a fairly fast way to, to use, uh, which in this case is a character studio rig. Uh, it's already set up. So I can move um, this model. Of course, the rig isn't the best in the world. This was made for a game jam, so speed was um, of the essence rather than quality. So um, uh, let's get started then. Okay, so first off, I want to take this guy and make it transparent so I can see the bones, and I want to change my selection to just bones so I don't accidentally select the model. Again, let's turn on animation, select our BIP, and move it over. Uh, actually, it's a good height because I want it. Uh, create the extreme frames now. So I'll start with, I usually start with the legs because I, I get a better uh, a sense of what the uh, character pose would be. So you can see the rig is really terrible. Uh, what the pose of the character would be if the legs uh, were uh, are an extreme pose. One of the issues here with the, uh, with the rig is that if I tilt the head to high, the, um, or if I rotate the torso too much, the head will go out of the uh, <laughs> of the helmet. So that was an issue. Uh, my rotation axis is set to local axis, so I can rotate like the, in this case, the forearm, for example, to get the pose off of the uh, of the hand. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the, this might be a little too extreme, this, because I really don't like the guy looking down. It doesn't make any sense that he's running and looking down at the same time. So let's try and get these feet to move back a little, like this. And let's get the, the hip to also rotate. Also, let's match the position of the legs. Let's have them line up. And this one here. So it's it's kind of what I feel is most difficult at the beginning is to get this sort of pose right in a way. So let's see if we can twist. We need to twist the uh, torso a little like that. OK, I also probably want to twist the head opposite. So this is a sort of twisting uh, motion. So let's copy all of this pose and let's paste it at the end. Uh, and let's paste the opposite at frame eight, which is halfway. So paste opposite. So already we have this, which is terrible, of course. I mean, even the curves are unbalanced, but I'm not going to deal with the curves because uh, it just it just takes a lot of time to work that out. So I'll take the foot that's on the back that's moving forward and I'll pull it up sort of as it rubs up against the uh, the other foot. And this other foot, I'll actually put it um, a little bit better on the ground, a little bit straighter, tilt the tip forward as well. Okay, and these arms, even though they're sort of moving back, I want to have them close to the uh, more up. Okay, right, so let's copy this pose again. Copy and then go into our frame 12 and paste it opposite. Already, we have something that looks a little bit better, right? Again, the problem here is with the curves. So let's do a little bit more fine tuning. So halfway here, maybe this foot could be slightly tilted. Uh, actually, this foot could be a little bit lower, but that means I have to actually let's not move it there yet. Let's take our center of mass, pull it up. Uh, Pull it up at this frame. Let's have it landing on the ground. Let's have it on the same height here. Let's delete this one and have it on the same height as the back there. And then on frame four, we need to actually have it move up a little so that it matches with the ground and the same thing goes for frame 12. So now we have up and down motion. Okay, this up and down motion, we need to bring it down a little bit, a little bit more so that we have this sort of uh, pushing up. So in this frame, I think I'm going to do it so it's clearly sort of pushing up. Now frame 10 as well, have this guy down a little, pull this one up, rotate, flatten the tip like that. Okay, so now we have it landing and pushing up. I actually could do, especially for bit 01, could move these two forward a bit. Okay, so now I have a bit more bounciness, right? But the hands still don't look that good. And it's probably because they have absolutely no sort of delay. And this one is way too forward. Way, way, way too forward. So that's, that 
that was wrong. Let's take this guy, move it to the side. Okay, I like this a bit more. So let's actually take this pose, paste that at the end, and paste the same thing but mirrored. There we go. So now the guy's basically going back for energy. Now the problem is lining up the feet now. So this one is okay there. Let's pull it towards the inside a little. Same thing here. And that it's okay. Once it's lift off the ground, we really don't need to worry much about its position because it's sort of free. And here, pretty much the same. Okay, so it's pretty basic rough animation for starting to walk. The other thing I like to add sometimes is just add a little bit of head uh, tilt just for the sense of things knocking on the ground. And I like to add that for the um, for the hands as well. So I'm going to take the, both of the hands and on the same frame as the head, I'll move it down just a little like they sort of knock down and then they'll, they'll sort of pull up. And here I kind of want to have them a little higher up. And here, of course, the same down. And then pull them up again. So now you should see some of that bounciness on the hands as well. It's not by much, but it's there. And again, the problem here I feel is basically the problem with the curves and the, sort of the way that the animation wraps itself around. But this is a very basic way to start a running animation. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.